Um, all right, so uh, I'll start us off a little bit uh, today with a few comments, and then um, Coach will make some comments. Um, I, I just want to begin by thanking all of you for uh, coming uh, to today's availability and, and uh, the introduction of our interim head, head men's basketball coach, Josh Eilert. Um, let me start by saying thank you to our fans. Uh, what makes our program successful and what makes it special is the passion that the people here have for WVU. And uh, that has not waned, um, and that has been evident this past week. And we continue to be poised to, uh, for, to continue momentum and growth. I'll take a moment to give a special thanks to some of our staff members who has been in the trenches this past week and assisted with this process. Uh, Natasha Oaks, who's our SWA, Steve Urias, who I've seen more than my wife and girls for the better part of six months, um, and uh, Vice President Rob Alsup. Rob is, as you guys know, uh, he was the interim AD and has certainly been a, a great friend of ours. I also want to just briefly thank President Gee and our board, specifically our chair, Tom Jones, for being available for discussion as we work through this past week. Uh, the alignment vision and leadership of the institution are critically important and that was helpful as we dealt with everything. Uh, first, I'll talk just a little bit about what process happened the past week. Uh, this is the 20th time that I've led a head coaching search and for a variety of reasons, it was certainly uh, the most complicated. Um, obviously, we didn't have resolution until late Saturday night that our men's basketball program would need a head coach. And on Sunday morning, we begin the process of updating our previous candidate lists, mining for additional candidates, and vetting search firms. That continued into Monday. On Monday, we were able to partner with the search firm, start making calls to potential candidates. The results of those calls varied from absolute interest to, yes, I'd be interested, but timing makes this difficult, or I'd be interested, but I just couldn't do it uh, with the timing. So that was kind of the, the variety of interest. We finished those calls on Wednesday, uh, but we were hearing the, the concern with timing enough that we really started two parallel tracks. One was for a permanent head coach and the other was for an interim head coach. And on the interim side, we were willing to consider outside candidates, but we were also very confident that we had some really good uh, candidates inside our program. One consistent thing we heard from coaches, agents, and others is they knew this was a great job because of the passion of the fans, the resources we provide, and the quality and depth of this conference. On Thursday and Friday, we conducted a series of Zoom interviews. So Coach Eilert uh, got to Zoom with us, even though we were both on the same campus. Um, but we wanted to keep those processes consistent. Uh, those concluded Friday afternoon. Our committee regrouped to decide next steps. And after weighing all of the factors, we felt pursuing an interim option made the most sense due, due to, to everything that was going on. We met with Coach Eilert in person for well over two hours on Saturday. Uh, we even had to take a couple of breaks in there, I think, so uh, give him a chance to regroup. And then uh, he met with President Gee afterwards. Um, and then shortly after that, you all see we made a decision and then you received the announcement uh, that we had made a decision to ask Coach Eilert to serve as our head coach for the 23-24 season. From the onset of the situation that we were put into on Saturday, I tried to be as communicative as I could while running, in essence, two highly expedited searches and trying to maintain the confidentiality of our candidates. <clears throat> I told our assistant coaches they'd all have an opportunity to have discussion uh, with me and, and communicate with various members of the staff almost daily. So why Coach Eilert? Well, for starters, he is the type of human being that you want leading young people and the type of person that you want to work with. He has incredible integrity. I was very impressed with him during this process. He is loyal. He hasn't been a job hopper. He stayed right here and worked his way up uh, as a mountaineer. He is thoughtful and strategic. He is honest. He also has a great basketball mind. And as we talked to various people in and around the program, it had been clear he had been given a tremendous amount of responsibilities over his time at WVU. He knows every aspect of the program, having served in basketball operations and as our video coordinator before being named assistant coach. Lastly, he is a tremendously hard worker. I believe a farm boy. 
You can buy a lot of farming equipment now. <laughs> I don't want to go back. <laughs> He's a devoted husband and father. He and Brandy, who's sitting in the front row, have three terrific kids, Brendan, Emery, and Tristan. You guys stand up and wave real quick. Give them a round of applause. Um, he's just the kind of person you'd want to play for, the kind of person you'd want to work with. Um, and the last thing I shared with Josh and I'll share with you is he has my full support. I told him I view him as the head coach for an interim period of time, not as an interim coach. And here's what I mean by that. He will have my full support and the full support of this department and this university to make decisions he feels are in the best interest of the program during this season. He doesn't need to feel like he doesn't have ability to make chances, changes that he sees fit to make. He is the head coach, and I want him to feel and know he's empowered in that role. With that, I'll let Josh make opening remarks, and then we'll take questions. The questions, at least for Josh, should only be uh, easy questions. You guys know the drill. You don't get grilled on your first day, and uh, and we'll go from there. Josh? Yeah, we'll save the curveballs for Ren uh, after I get done. So, um, <clears throat> First of all, I want to thank uh, Ren. Uh, he's been absolutely uh, incredible through, through this process with me, and and very forthright on the communication and uh, the process. And and I, I had full trust in him from day one. Um, you know, he, he put me in charge to uh, try to keep everything together, keep everybody level-headed in a very hard, unfortunate circumstance. So I, first of all, I want to thank him. Uh, President Gee for having the trust in me, uh, Rob Alsup, uh, Steve Urias, Natasha Oaks, all you guys that were on the board uh, or the hiring committee and, and you know, either, Y'all put me through the ringer, just so you know. I mean, it was a stressful time period and, and trying to manage all these things with my family behind my back. And, and uh, I'd also like to thank them, my wife, Brandy, uh, my, my children here in attendance. Uh, they've been through a lot as well. And I want to thank them for everything they do. And, and you know, I know they got my back every day. So thank you all. Uh, 16 years ago, uh, let me go back even further. 17 years ago, Coach Huggins uh, hired me to be his GA. Uh, there was a change in, in coaching leadership at Kansas State, and Coach Huggins took me on, and he gave me a chance. A year later, my wife and I are packing up, headed to West Virginia, uh, just for an opportunity. We want an opportunity in this business, and, and we had full faith in, in Coach Huggins, and he's gave me that opportunity, so I want to thank him and, and uh, tell him how much I appreciate him and love him for, for giving me that opportunity. Now, since then, you know, he's, we've, you know, worked the way up the, the, the totem pole, so to speak, in, in this profession, but I've had patience with it. You know, when I first got here in, in Morgantown, West Virginia with my wife, they adopted me, the people adopted me, uh, we got ingrained in the community, and it's just been a special, special time for us. And um, like you said, I had patience through the whole process uh, of my career here, and, and, and it's, it's paid off. And uh, I think that's a lesson to all you young guys out there that, you know, don't jump ship just because you always see uh, greener pastures. Uh, things can work out in your favor if you're just loyal. So. All right. Good job. He didn't even need notes, so <laughs> he'll be coming after my job next. All right, so questions for Coach and I. So, Josh, I don't think this is a curveball, but the first order of business for you is obviously to try to retain as much of your roster as possible. So just your message to them, I assume you've met with a lot of them, if not a majority. Just ex explain what's going on with trying to keep this thing intact. Well, I mean, these are 18 to 23-year-olds, so uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in their life right now. There's a lot of options in their life. And... Uh, the biggest message that I have and our staff has is, you know, we care about them. And we want them to know that, you know, we want to reassure them that this is a great place for them. And it is a great place for them. I don't want to hinder them in any way if they feel like they have another opportunity that would be better suited for them. And I'm going to give them that opportunity. And if they want to take a look at something else, that's fine. But... Well, I'm also going to say the message here, we got something special. 
We got a special group of individuals. We got a special uh, administration. We got a special staff, and we can do something uh, really, really neat here and, and turn this thing around and turn the page and and keep the tradition alive of you know the mountaineer culture. Josh, uh, can you just kind of take us through uh, the reorganization of the rest of the staff? Uh, what it's going to look like. We're not there yet. Uh, Ren and I have uh, met a couple times on this, but uh, um, you know it's early. We're going to take a look at everybody in the program um, and, and their role and figure out how we can do things better, uh, how we can do things more efficient. Um, but also, you know, we got some really good people in our program, really good people. And I want to bring the most, of, you know, bring that out of them. And, so I'm going to first evaluate everybody on our staff and figure out how they can fit in, and, and then we'll go from there. Uh, there's, there's no promises, but uh, uh, we, we have really good people in place, and, and as much as possible, I'd like to retain them. I'm waiting on my offer to return to coaching. It's <laughs> Steve's got that <laughs> in the bag. 16 years is a long time to be an assistant, especially with one staff. Was it always your goal to be a head coach? Yeah, it's always been my goal. Um, I've had opportunities over the years to step out and, and do different things. And, and I thought the synergy of the, the whole matter, if, if, you, if you show loyalty, if you show patience, uh, it's always going to work out for you. Um, I never felt the need to uproot, uproot my, my wife and my kids if I didn't need to, I felt like I was in, in this business, let's be honest. I mean, it's, it's unheard of to be in one place for 16 years. And, and I think he forgot the one uh, role I did have. I was assistant AD for six days. Um, and then I got promoted to assistant coach. So I did have that role as well. So no, but, uh, yeah, it's unheard of, but, uh, I think it's a lesson for a lot of people just to stay true to the people that are true to you. Josh, the angst level for you and your family in, during that week interlude because, I mean, you're, you're head coach now, but you may have not had a job. What, what's that like? I think if you're true to your values, and uh, it's a lot easier to have faith that things are going to work out. And if, if you do right by people, it's easier to have faith that things are going to work out. So I didn't. It hit me, obviously, because the reality of the situation in terms of where I could be a year from now. But I, I just try to keep a level head with my, my family, and I always knew I, I always knew they had my back, and, and we're going to make this thing work. So, yeah, was there times of anxiety? 100%. Um, you know, I locked myself in a dark room a couple times, try to figure things out. But, uh, you know, I talked to my late father, you know, it's been gone for six years, and, and just – have those moments and, and try to figure out life and, and put it in perspective. This, this is for Ren. I know it's difficult to hire a permanent coach from outside the school. But do you consider hiring a coach, promoting a coach, and making him a non-interim coach? On a, on a permanent basis? I, I, I mean, I felt like that um, this is a top 20, uh, top certainly top 25 job, maybe top 15 job. And so we really just got to a place where we felt like an interim situation suited everybody best. And so we did consider a variety of permanent uh, replacements and talked to a lot of a lot of people. And listen, Coach and I were really clear. Um, this initial uh, agreement is for one season, but you know, there's no question he gets a chance to, to show every day what he's about and what the program's about. And we'll talk about that at, a, at another uh, day and time. Um, but I thought it was important to have stability uh, right now. It's, it, was, it, it just as the week went on, it, it just become clear that um, it made sense to, to look at two parallel tracks and ultimately the committee and I, when we sat down, we thought this was the best course of action. Josh, as someone who has never been a head coach before, uh, how do you envision yourself as a head coach uh, and what part of Bob Huggins that you worked for for 16 years will you take into coaching? Uh, Coach Huggins, his coaching philosophy will have a, you know, be ingrained in me for the rest of my life. There's no question about that. Uh, he's a very 
defensive minded coach. I think I'll take a lot of his principles defensively. Uh, offensively, I'd like to, you know, change some things. But uh, yeah, as, as a head coach, um, you know, I haven't been one. I mean, there's, there's going to be a lot of questions raised about that, but I have full confidence in myself. And uh, I feel like every step of the way through the years, I've kind of been Coach Huggins' uh, voice. And uh, a lot of times he would he'd reach out to me and, and I'd give him guidance. So uh, I think that's a character of a true man in terms of, you know, understand and put good people around you and surround yourself with good people and, and help them make decisions for you. So uh, that's I'm not, I'm not going to say I sit here and say I know all the answers right now, but uh, I'm certainly going to put people around me that can help me uh, make good decisions. Would you hesitate to reach out to him for advice? Uh, uh, um, it depends. Yeah, you know, I've, I have a lot of influence and influences in my life. If if I need to reach out to him, I, I promise you he'll take my phone call. Red, um, how important was it for you and, and your, your uh, hiring staff to pick a guy that was going to allow you the best opportunity to retain players, knowing where you're at with recruiting and the transfer portal? Yeah, I think that probably got overplayed a little bit just in terms of maybe public perception. Um, once there was a head coaching uh, vacancy, the portal reopened. So um, there were going to be guys test that no matter what course of action was taken after that. And I, I knew that. Um, but I think you always, uh, when you're in my position, you want to weigh a variety of factors. And, and certainly um, the guys in that locker room's voice should be heard. Um, you know, and um, now you can't go make a hire that just satisfies one, one group of guys for one season. Um, you have to do what you think is best for the program. And, and when I talk to the, to the team, uh, I was consistent in saying that over and over, whether those were individual conversations or a team conversation. Um, I just said, hey, I, you guys, absolutely, I'm here to listen. Um, you know, can't tell you every candidate we're talking to because of confidentiality, can't, you know, but I'll tell you where we're at in the process, what I think the timeline looks like, and that absolutely your voice, uh, it will be heard. Um, but I, I never got to a place where I'm thinking, um, hey, we're going to do this because we – and I'll say this for him. I think there's an unreasonable expectation that he can just magically keep everybody from going into the portal. Like, that's not the case. Um, the, that all was triggered a week ago. And, and, and so I knew that. Um, I understood that we probably had a compressed timeline because of that, and, and we really didn't have as much as much time to do this as you would in a traditional window. Um, so was it – a factor, maybe, but probably the bigger factor is just letting the, the young men in that locker room have a voice on the kind of leader uh, that they would like to see in the program um, and then weighing that voice appropriately with all the other stakeholders. I mean, I had a chance to talk to Jerry West and Rod Thorne and Joe Missoula and Mike Ganzi and, you know, many other uh, uh, people that, that have a lot of affinity and love and, and appreciation for this program. So there were a lot of a lot of voices that I tried to listen to and consider. Were there any conversations after you got Coach Huggins' resignation, were there any other conversations with him on maybe who he would recommend to replace him, on what his opinions were? Because if you're polling Missoula and Gans and others who yeah. love the program, been around the program, obviously Huggins would fit into that category. Yeah, so uh, he Coach Huggins and I had a uh, – conversation Sunday morning um, and we got to express uh, our love and appreciation for each other there were it was emotional uh, but I did ask him is there anybody uh, you know I asked him both for characters and qualities that he thinks that I should be looking at um, and then I asked him if there were any particular names now that will stay you know confidential between he and I um, but um, and then he told me hey I've got faith in you and and go you know go do your thing and um, so and he really didn't I've not talked to him uh, uh, since then so uh, but uh, yeah he had a chance to I mean you listen he's somebody who d uh, tr established a tremendous legacy here over a course of, of 16 years and um, he knows the program and so and he and he knows the young men in our program so I thought that was a valuable data point to have as well obviously since May um, the University's athletic reputation has taken a percentage of a probably a natural perception hit, and, and, and 
one way or some some form or another. Um, with that way of thinking, when you were going through certain candidates and names, um, did did that perception like you know can we improve this? Uh, will this hurt? Uh, I mean, how, how much did that come in, come into play when you're when looking at potential candidates? I don't think it did. I mean, everybody that I know that was engaged said the same thing. This is a great job with almost unrivaled fan passion, affinity, and loyalty across an entire state. It's The resources here are great. The practice facility is tremendous. The Coliseum is one of the special places. With I mean, if you look on Ken Palm, one of the best home court advantages in the country is right here uh, in the Coliseum. So I didn't get that at all. Uh, and, and yeah, and, and I would say this. Um, listen, every college athletic program has times where there's turmoil, and and so I, I think those of us inside the industry probably don't weigh that as much as the general fan would. In a you know, in a way that um, I mean, I, I will tell you, I don't even know everything that's been written because I deleted uh, all of my social media apps off my phone, and it was in Do Not Disturb for four days. And so I was just trying to stay true to what I believe in and how you do things and not let let those kind of influence happen. But I think most of us inside the industry um, don't get too high with it or too low with, with that because you just know, like, there's going to be periods of time. And, and uh, you know, what's happened the last couple of months is um, – certainly been a time of, of turmoil, particularly for the men's basketball program, but it's still a special program with special support. And, and I think it's time for our fans and, to rally around and help this team have uh, as much success as they can possibly have. Brent, Brent, from the day you got here, it's been busy as an understatement. Can you talk a little bit about just you and what you've had to deal with? And I mean, is this just <laughs> has it been a rewarding job so far? It has. Listen, um, if you're going to cash those checks, you can't uh, lament the job. Uh, so that's just what comes comes with it. Um, but, uh, no, the people here have been tremendous. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I've loved it here. Now, uh, am I ready for some smoother waters to sail in? Of course. Uh, I, I'd love to see that, and, and I'm confident that we'll have those. But, uh, no, that's, that's not been something that uh, – I, I, you know, this is a special place, and I'm very fortunate to be here. One thing that's not been talked about a lot is the Big 12 and how it's changing, and just you know, you shepherding this school into a newer Big 12. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I'm excited about that. I mean, when you look at having Cincinnati in the league, that's going to create a, a great rivalry over time. Will happen overnight, but um, and then UCF, we have a lot of alums and donors in Florida, so that's going to give a chance to connect with them. Another another uh, Eastern based team, um, but uh, I'm excited about the future of the Big 12. I think. We have a chance to, to um, if you just look this year at all the different sports, I mean, OU and Texas are t certainly two of the more storied programs, but if you look at the success across a lot of the sports, um, they did extraordinarily well. So I, I think the future of the Big 12 is very bright and, and very good for, for uh, WVU. And Josh, can you talk a little bit about, is there any stories you can tell us about him, about, uh, I don't know, quirky or just uh, what your trust in him is, obviously, but... Uh... To be honest with you, Ren and I, we, we've had some short conversations before all this went down, but we really got to know each other through this process. And, and I have full faith in Ren in terms of his leadership. Uh, he's a very, very bright individual and uh, keeps his head on straight. It's, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to work with someone like that and feel, feel a comfort level that, you know, the, the program's going in a, a very good direction. Ren, to, to John's point about uh, you feel like two or three years have been compressed into seven months so far here? Kind of, but part of that's how much time I've spent with Urias. I mean, <laughs> if you'd spent that kind of time with Steve, it would feel that way too. Those are dog years. Um, no, uh, one of my favorite hobbies here in Morgantown is giving Steve a hard time, so nobody take that too literal. Um, but, um, yeah, listen um, – I always feel like I'm a person of faith. I think uh, you're, you're tested in seasons when you're supposed to be tested. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, my family's loved it here. If I had to pick job or family, which one to have problems with, I'd rather have the job, honestly. I, I, I was probably more nervous about the family's transition, and, and they're absolutely loving it. And so 
um, we fit in here and we, we enjoy it uh, very much. And so, uh, you know, listen, it's given us a chance. I've probably gotten to know, I mean, Co- Coach Allard and I, we got to know each other a lot better the last few days. And so um, times of, uh, of turmoil give you an opportunity to kind of uh, get a chance to see who you are, get a chance to see who the people around you are. For either one of you guys, maybe both of you guys, I think that um, you both mentioned Coach Huggins, your affinity for him, and things have changed, obviously. But what relationship would you all like to see with him and maybe on YouTube with, with the program whenever the time is right? I'll let Josh speak for his because his, his, his time with Coach goes back uh, a lot further. Um, but I'll just say this. In the, in the time I spent with Coach Huggins, um, we never had a crossword. I've got immense respect for him. Um, you know, I've had a chance, I mentioned this in a previous press conference, I think, but, um, I've had a chance to work with two Hall of Famers now, Eddie Sutton and then him, um, learned a lot from both of them. Um, he certainly has done a tremendous, uh, amount for the university, for, for the basketball program, uh, for cancer research and, and a variety of other things. Um, so, you know, my hope and intention is, is that, uh, on a personal level, I'll always have a, a a friendship and respect with with Coach Huggins, but from an institutional perspective, he he's an important part of our history, and we're going to honor and recognize that um, in an appropriate way as we move forward. Um, the last couple of months is uh, I know not what he wanted to happen. Certainly isn't uh, something that we wanted to happen, but uh, it is what it is. And and time has a way of of healing all wounds and. I think as time goes along, there'll be more and more focus on all of the positive uh, things that happened here uh, during his time. And certainly uh, this, the, what's happened the last few weeks will, will not impact my relationship with him. And I don't think it'll have much of an impact with the university's relationship with him. Coach? You know, the first thing I think of is uh, the conversation I had with him on Sunday morning. Uh, he gave me a call and it was early. and. Um, he just sounded at peace. He really did. Uh, the fact that uh, they named me the head coach and and the people in the program and, and the, the guys were just going to – I was able to carry the torch, and he just sounded at peace. He talked about the, the day before he, how many smallmouth bass he caught on the lake. So uh, he's getting some time, time to reflect and do some things. I know he's got a, a extreme amount of remorse for what happened in, in the last month. and. And he owns those mistakes, and, and we're going to move on. Like he said, uh, time heals all wounds, and there'll be time that we, we really uh, uh, take his legacy and, and his, 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 what, 16 years here, and we really celebrate that. So, I mean, he's been a huge influential part of my life, and uh, uh, that's not going to change. Ren, i got a couple of uh, money questions for you. With Coach Huggins' resignation now in hand, uh, does the school still uh, plan to donate uh, the million dollars to the Crew Center and the LGBTQ2 organizations that had been originally laid out uh, prior to the resignation? Yes, it would be our intention to honor that. And then uh, in terms of um, looking ahead, future hires, uh, the school obviously is in the middle of, you know, checking its own finances, so to speak, and, and difficult financial times. How much of a role will that play in searching for, for new head coaches? I think when you're leading an athletic program, you can't lead out of, out of fear. You kind of have to be aggressive and put it all out there. And so, um, yeah, you know, we wouldn't let in this search or any others, the finances uh, be a hindrance. Um, you know, we we are not the most uh, uh, from a population standpoint. We, we don't have the most uh, uh, people in a, in in a state. We're one of the lower populated states, but we command uh, the attention of everybody in this state. And we have some great great supporters. We've had people that have stepped up in the last few days to to help us in a variety of ways. And um, so, yeah, I can't envision. Um, financial financial hand, you know constraints being a, a factor in any of our, our our coaching searches because it's just too important to the state that the program represents the university and the state the right way. Ren, now I know you're not going to go into 
in-depth conversation with candidates and things like that. But, but you're still going to ask me. Right? Well, I'm going to ask something similar. You did mention talking to Coach Missoula, um, and you were open during the women's search about opinions on certain candidates and things like that. So just because fans are bringing this up, there were rumors that Coach Beeline was somebody that the program talked with, and then maybe he would return, obviously, was at West Virginia before Michigan. And had, he would be a different path with his Hall of Fame stature yeah. and being even older than Coach Huggins. Any the validity to those conversations from the program's perspective, were you guys ever thinking about he could be an option to return and anything you could give there? Yeah, um, I, I'll say this. Uh, if there was a name that people come up with that obviously is a, a Hall of Fame caliber coach, and the, and the question is I wonder if they called, yes. Uh, we called them all um, just about. So um, we, we tried to exhaust uh, the list because I think you got a responsibility to do that when you have a job open. And um, people that think, oh, you've got to rush this. No, this is a top 20 job, and we have to do our due diligence and, and, and get through a process. Um, and, uh, and that's what we did. Um, I did have a chance uh, early on to talk to, to Coach Beeline. That's another person who is unbelievable credentials, who, who spent time here, who knows college basketball, knows the state. Um, you know, beyond just picking his brain, the nature of conversations uh, beyond that, I wouldn't divulge. But, um, but I've got a lot of respect for, for him as a coach and as a person, and people that I know and respect uh, do as well. So. Josh, what's the next week to 10 days look for you with the uh, July evaluation period coming up and all that? What, what's it going to be like for you? I'm sure you're going to have a fire hose. Yeah, you know, my hair's going to be on fire. <laughs> um, we're going to take it day by day. Uh, we're not going to try to get, our, get ahead of ourselves. I mean, first and foremost, we got to solidify our roster. Um, guys are, are taking their opportunity to feel out the situation, and, and I feel like now that we're building a new foundation, I think some of that stuff will calm down. Um, but just like today, it was business as usual with the guys that, you know, are on, on the roster and and they were working out and, and they had good spirits and we're going to move on. And we're going to move on and we're going uh, to keep, keep building and grinding and and we're about a month away from, you know, go to, going to Italy and taking this team over there and, and having three dry runs at it. and and getting those opportunities in. And, and so we're looking forward to the next month and, and how, it, how it shapes up. Josh, is it um, hard coaching now with the intern level? You've been here such a long time. Obviously, you want to stay here longer. What do you have to do to prove? And then, Ren, what will he have to do to prove to so that you can kind of put that <clears> intern <throat> title behind you? Because I would think that's got to be hard when you keep hearing there's going to be a search out there this season. And you, know, you want to be able to recruit guys and know that, hey, we're moving forward. Is it hard having that interim title? I, I can kind of start with that, and then I'll let him him follow up. I felt like it was important to make our intentions known now for that reason. That way people don't have to sit around and speculate. They know what our plan is. And so uh, we can all work that plan. Um, um, he doesn't need to, to – this is going to – listen, you inherit a job this time of year with the turmoil that we've had. It's, it's going to be difficult. Um, and I'm not somebody who um, – I've said this consistently – um, I don't put expectations out there in terms of wins and losses. I'm more concerned with uh, how you overall manage and run a program and how you treat people and the way that you help people grow and develop because I believe if you're doing all those things, the wins eventually come. I've just seen that all over and over uh, time and time again. And so um, we've made it clear what our intentions are. Um, he, he and I have had candid conversations about that. Um, and uh, we believe the young people in this program and the staff members over there deserve stability and to be able to go on and focus uh, on this season. Um, and then we'll think about uh, what's beyond this season at the conclusion of this season. Josh, after you were hired Saturday night, did you hear from any players who said, yeah, now I'm staying? Well, I'd, honestly, my phone was just going crazy. So. Uh, <laughs> We, we spoke to the team afterwards, and, and it was just such a, a grueling experience the last week trying to get through it and, and everybody, you know, keep their sanity. So, you know, the guys that were in town, you know, I gave them a hug and, and told them I love them and, and, you know, told them I'm ready to get started and hit the ground running. And, and it, there's still uncertainty there. I mean, they're not going to automatically say, boom, rubber stamp this, let's go. Uh, there's an amount of trust you have to have with an individual, and, and I mean they have 
their individual goals and, and their selfish goals, and but we have our program goals. So once we get those aligned and, and get those figured out, um, but to answer your questions, yeah, we had conversations. We didn't have all the conversations on Saturday night by any means. It was, it was a long day. So Sunday we started having those conversations. The, the sun came up on Sunday, a new day on Mountaineer Nation, and, and, and we turned the page. And we figure out how we can make the most of this. And back to the question about the interim status, that doesn't concern me. Uh, I'm I'm planning full planning. I'm, my staff and I we're going to build build a great uh, uh, game plan, and we're going to go at this, and we're going to try to win. And that's the, the plan, and, and that's what we're going to do. That's our mission. So I understand that you know this isn't going to be handed over to me uh, on a platter. So I got to earn it, and that's what we're going to do. Any more questions? Josh, please. Josh, you said when you were moving into the assistant job at one point that building the schedule was the hardest thing you ever had to do and that you were happy to get that up. Now your responsibilities have obviously expanded hugely. Have you thought about what might be the toughest from this point on? Uh, not Besides really. dealing with the athletic director? Uh, so far, that's been good. But uh, <laughs> no, the scheduling, going back to that, I mean, I love the scheduling. You know, we were. Uh, it's fun work, but when COVID hit and then the uncertainty of the scheduling, that was probably the hardest thing. But I'm up for any challenge. I mean, that's how you grow. If you don't uh, jump outside your box and, and feel comfortable in your own skin and, and get out there and, and test yourself, uh, how are you going to grow? And I'm excited for this challenge. I'm, I'm really pumped. Uh, I know the fans have our support. Uh, I feel that. I mean, I've, I feel Mountaineer Nation and, and – the people here are great, and they always have been. That's really why we've stuck around for 16 years. We really had great relationship here, great relationships here, and and it's it's a special place, and and we want to make this special, and we want to make Mountaineer uh, Nation proud of what we're doing. Josh, you mentioned uh, kind of carrying on the torch for Huggins. Is there any level of added pressure that you feel coming in after a Hall of Famer WVU stable to men's basketball like Bob Huggins? Yes. Uh, I mean, anybody that had to take this role was going to feel a lot of pressure. I mean, he is a Hall of Fame coach, and, and very few people have to do that. I look at it as an opportunity to, uh, you know, I don't want to say people have low expectations, but uh, I'm excited to, to show what, what I can do and, and what our staff can do and what our guys can do and how we can get them bought in and in a, in a difficult situation. So... Uh, I see as an opportunity. Last question for Josh. I have one for Rand. Uh, okay. Rand, I'll get Rand, I'll get them oh, okay. Rand, I'll stay around and answer a few more questions. But anything else for Josh? I was just going to ask you any other coaching, um, you know, mentors or people that maybe you are planning on modeling your coaching from besides Coach Huggins. Uh, there's several guys that you know have reached out and and um, really gave me. You know, I had a great conversation with a, a very good friend of mine, Darius Nichols, last night, and and he gave me some some pieces of advice. And my wife and I uh, listened to him. And it, guys like that, just solid gold that I've been around that uh, I appreciate. And you know, there I can't I'm on a list all the people I talked to, the Brad Underwoods of the world, the Frank Martins, uh, those guys that had a special part of you know my development. Uh, even within the league, Mike Boynton uh, reached out, and he's just a class act. And and the conversations I had with him uh, were went absolutely fabulous. And and I'm excited. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm being welcomed with open arms. And I understand the gravity, but I, uh, I'm going to pour my heart into this job. And I'm excited to get going. You'll go one more because you were back here in the back for coach. Um, can I ask you, Josh, what do you think you want to build the culture around first and foremost for you, head coach Josh Eiler? What's the what's the staple, the foundation for you going forward? First is trust. Uh, they got to have trust in me, and I got to have trust in them. Um, it's it's accountability. Uh, those are a couple of things that come to mind. I mean, uh, come in every day, uh, work your ass off, and 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 something very special could come out of this. So. First and foremost, we got to build those relationships back, and 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 things are going to work out for us. Coach Eller, thank you. Thank you, Coach.